Hey BC, uh, Big Star 1000, uh, give me 10, 1984, uh, and uh, a great year for music in 1984, lots and lots, and lots of uh, really great releases, uh, so we've got 10 records for you here, and um, um, because I'm time poor at the moment, you know, I, I, I wish I could devote more time to this endeavor, but it is what it is, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to start with a pair of uh, records on the great uh, English label 4AD. And the first one is uh, Treasure by the Cocteau Twins, which arguably uh, their first truly great album. They made lots of good albums, but this is this is where greatness happens. Uh, a real blueprint for. Um, this kind of ethereal, otherworldly, um, seminal, seminal music, really. A band fronted by uh, Liz Fraser. And on a personal note, uh, we had Lorelei, the second song, as a, one of our wedding songs um, uh, almost 15 years ago. Uh, so a, a much loved album in this household. Um, and Really, the, the themes, the, the names of the songs and the sort of mythical, uh, they, they've used lots of, um, lots of um, myth, especially uh, Greek myth, to, um, as references there, Pandora, etc. That just lends, a, a, you know, again, an otherworldly quality to, to the music. Um, it's a, a central record. If you don't have it, don't hesitate. And this is another 4AD record, this Mortal Coil. It'll end in tears. This is the, the project started by Ivo Watts Russell, the uh, boss of 4AD, uh, kind of assembling a roster of musicians on his label. This, um, obviously, um, Cocteau Twins, um, Dead Can Dance. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm brain fried this afternoon, but you can look them up. And uh, and making them record largely covers, uh, things like Kangaroo and Holocaust by uh, Big Star, uh, things like uh, Song to the Siren. I think Howard Devoto uh, sings on this as well. We got uh, the Cocteau Twins, Howard Devoto, yes, sings Holocaust. Um, you've got um, other bands like, um, well, the Dead Can Dance, as I said. Uh, you have Exmal Deutschland, Modern English, Cindy Talk, Colorbox, basically the, the, the finest 4AD bands to that at the time. And obviously the Pixies and all uh, later. Wonderful, ethereal, again, ethereal, completely, you know, um, it's like you're, you're, you're enveloped in a kind of uh, s s smoke of haze when you listen to this it's brilliant um, I have to include you two because forever and ever ever since I was a teenager uh, this was my introduction to rock music in general you uh, two and I still love these records again as I said last week in one of my videos they're kind of imprinted inside my 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 brain in my in my subconscious really, uh, and are just completely, uh, you know, to me they they're just an essential part of my of my musical experience, and regardless of what people may think of them now, I just I don't it doesn't bother me. Um, this is one of the best albums, easily one of the best albums, produced by Brian Eno. Uh, which adds another quality to this, and uh, I just love almost side one is almost perfect in my opinion, um, especially wire, wire and the the title track the Unfo and the unforgettable fire, which are just two of the best YouTube songs in their whole catalog in my in my humble opinion. Um, nineteen eighty four, a uh, couple of. Uh, American indie records that I love, love, love. Absolutely brilliant. The first one, uh, The Replacements, uh, Let It Be. How good is this record? It's just totally brilliant. Uh, 
you know, this is sort of yeah, I I can't I can't I don't know what to describe this as as a little bit of a of a power pop esque um, you know indie quality to it. I don't know. It's uh, the replacements. The 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 natural heirs of Big Star really in 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 some way. Uh, and in fact, I think Paul Westerberg and played with Big Star in in, in their later inca incarnation. Uh, just a, a great record. I will dare favorite thing. Every just everything. Sixteen Blue, brilliant, brilliant record. Um, uh, the replacement, although not my favorite replacements record. Uh, I think um, uh, Please to Meet Me is better in my opinion. Okay. Uh, the other American record that I was going to show you is on CD. It's uh, Meets Puppets number two. Amazing record. Amazing record. And largely, you know, broken to the world by Kurt Cobain, really, in uh, the MTV Unplugged um, back in the 90s. Um, he covered uh, Plateau and uh, Lake of Fire, Omi. Uh, which are standout tracks of this album, but also split myself in two. Uh, um, oh, just the whole thing is is brilliant. New Gods, New Gods is excellent too. Uh, the Meat Puppets, Kirk and Chris Kirkwood. Um, I think from Arizona or somewhere like that. Uh, just I, I love watching that part in the in the unplugged, the Nirvana unplugged, where you see um, and. Uh, I think Chris Kirkwood, the guitar player, I, I might be wrong, and his skills on guitar are unbelievable. He's such a good guitar player, it's amazing. Shame they were massive drug addicts and um, just, just, just a bit of a bummer. Um, okay, Manu Goetching, E2E4, I mean, a well-loved record in the VC, a kind of blueprint for, for techno and um yeah completely uh forward thinking avant-garde record uh you can play this at 45 rpm or 33 rpm doesn't matter sounds good either way um money coaching from ashra temple with yeah a blueprint for techno really um okay some english records three english records uh ocean rain by echo and the bunnyman um yeah, one of the best records, um, not least because it contains a Killing Moon, which you know is one of the best songs. But the first side is amazing. Stephen Nocturnal Me, Crystal Days, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant first side. Uh, Echo and the Bunnymen from Liverpool. Um, a live album. Such an excellent, excellent live album. My word, is it good. Um, concert The Cure Live that is also from 1984 as I can show you this is like an early years greatest hits record almost uh, Shake Dog Shake Primary Shout Sometimes Hang Garden The Walk which is a superb version on this album uh, 100 Years Forest The Forest what a great song 10, 15, Saturday Night and Killing an Arab. Um, highly recommend this record, The Cure Live. Um, this is kind of, it's going to be kind of controversial because it's not really an album, although it does get uh, classified as an album. In some places it's an album, in some places it's a compilation and I've chosen to include it and I can do what I want. <laughs> so, too bad. Head Full of Hollow by The Smiths. I mean, um, the first Smiths album, the one with the uh, guy with the, the torso of the guy, is really the, the album from 1984. I don't have that on vinyl. I don't think I have it. No. I might have it on CD. I didn't even look. This is our time for I am at the moment. Uh, but this came out in 84 as well, and this contains much of the same songs. Uh, completely essential, essential record in any collection. The Smiths had full of hollow. Uh, charming, this charming man. Um, yeah, as soon as now, as soon as now. Um, what difference does it make? All right, 
And finally, my favorite artist released a great record in 1984. I'm talking about Serge Gainsbourg, uh, Love on the Beat. Uh, in my top five, Gainsbourg has released quite a few albums. Um, and this to me is easily top five material. Uh, Histoire de Mel Nelson, uh, Le Matet de Chou, um, Ozarm, etc., the reggae album. And this are the, the, the best, the four best for me. Uh, this is where he discovered this kind of gritty New York funk from the early 80s. It's kind of like a mix of Prince kind of funky approach mixed with, um, you know, this kind of Grandmaster Flash, uh, sonic um, background, you know, lots of really... Um, synth sounds. Larry Fast plays on this. Uh, Larry Fast, who is basically, um, what's his name? Uh, um, Synergy. Uh, Stan Harrison, who played, uh, I think, on Station to Station or something. Oh, it was it was in Bowie's backing band. Maybe on Young Americans. So it's a great band. Uh, Love on the Beat. The title track is basically porn. Uh, it delivered in a sort of... Uh, um, idiosyncratic Gainsbourg way. I don't know how they even played it on radio in 1984. It's so freaking outrageous. You just, it's just, it's, yeah, it's kind of filthy. Sorry Angel is a wonderful song. Um, it's an interesting album because every single song title is in English. It's the first time that um, Gainsbourg ever did that, but this thing's in French, obviously. Um, yeah, top notch. Okay, that's all I've got time for now. 12 minutes, brilliant. Um, talk to you, PC.